Good evening and welcome to Paul T's World. And in this video, we're just going to have a casual walk around the garden late in the evening. It's 10 to nine. Uh, the sunset is about 20 to 10 tonight. So the sun is still quite high at the moment. Uh, the birds are singing. It's pretty quiet. Hopefully it'll stay quiet. So let's just walk around the garden and see what we can see. So I've no idea where we're going. We're just going to walk around and see what happens. There's a robin singing up in the poplar tree. As we make our way over to the shed bed. Ah, oh, there are some foxglove that are flowering. Foxgloves flower all over Britain in June. The rhododendron bush, rhododendron shrub is now well over. It's still got its old flowers. Another foxglove. The flowers of the climbing hydrangea. And the spent blooms of the deciduous azalea. Oh, remember when I said that the Chinese Virginia creeper that climbs up the shed here isn't invasive? Well, it isn't. But um, wow, uh, I've had that I've I've had that shrub for oh, it must be 15 years or so, and it's just gently climbed up the shed. Uh, it hasn't got a reputation for being invasive, but gosh, it is now growing quite steadily. Look at this; it's heading up the shed right up to the top here. So I'm just going to have to cut that back a little bit as the tendrils reach forward. This is looking to the west, the northwest actually, where the sun will go down in an hour's time. Uh, what else did I notice today? Now, the euphorbia here that's flowered beautifully, stood up nice and straight. We had some really nice heavy rain today and it's flopped a little bit. So I'm just going to check what I do with this euphorbia now. Can I cut it right back? Will it then grow this season? Um, I don't know. So we'll see. It's great learning about the different plants. The Aquilegia, grandma's bonnets, cuties. Yeah, they're just leaning over slightly now with this heavy rain we've had today. In fact, there was a thunder, well, a thunderstorm really nearby. Could hear it, but it didn't actually reach us, but we did get some heavy rain. Oh, this is the lace cap, the Zorro lace cap, with its dark stems and gorgeous flowers that we'll see in July. Well, in actual fact, we'll see them later this month. Sounds like a crow calling. The cistus has been flowering, dropping its petals everywhere hit by this heavy rain. But it's been quite humid today, actually. I love it when it's warm and humid. We've got echinacea here. These are from the plug plants of last year. They didn't flower last year. They just grew a little bit and now they've grown up. The echinacea along with some rubecchia. I think there's some rubecchia back there, actually. And they're going to flower, well, in the next few weeks. Here's the flocks. 
Now, as you can see here, what I did is I gave the flocks a little bit of a Chelsea chop. We've got the short ones here. In fact, you can see where I cut it, it's now grown two. And at the back here, I left it. So I'm hoping that in cutting these back, they will flower, of course, but flower later, that they will now be quite stiff and hold up the ones at the back. So I'll get early flowering. Oh, in fact, there we are. That'll be flowering shortly, won't it? And then when that's finished, the ones at the front will start flowering. Called the Chelsea Chop. We call that uh, the Chelsea Chop because Chelsea Flower Show in London is in May. And that's the time you do this chopping back of some of the tall plants. Oh, and this sweet William that I mentioned. Again, this was the plug plant. Such a dark, gorgeous, deep red. Sweet William Red Rocket. And that was a plug plant last year. And I planted the plug plant, oh, when was it? In April or May? And it shot up and flowered. And look at this, it's really thickened up, love it. Now, this is interesting. This is the creeping phlox. We all know creeping phlox. Um, and look how, look how leggy it is. Look how leggy that is. So the question is, do I shave this off to lower it? Um, or do I leave it like this? Not quite sure what to do. I've got a feeling I'm going to cut this off a little bit. Uh, it's obviously flowered, what, in May, April? Red Lychnus. Uh, Rose Campion. Oh, and in actual fact, this one's red as well. I was hoping this one would be white. They self-seed, so I've got two red ones. The Wygela, this little red Wygela. I showed the flowers of that in the other video. It's growing quite nicely. Oh, and a uh, paniculata. Hydrangea paniculata, and this one's a pinky winky. If you look at one of my early videos from, whew, it must be a year and a half ago now, I bought that for five pounds and it was two little twigs. A flomis, I don't know flomis really, but I will do when it grows up. A neighbour gave me that. Gosh, this deciduous azalea, the one that was in the pot. In fact, there were two in the pot, wasn't there? The red one that's over there. And this one here, I took them out of the pot. They were a little bit feeling sorry for themselves and hadn't flowered much. But once you put it in the ground and give it some goodness, these plants respond so well. <laughs> look at all these grandma's bonnets all peering over the bed here to have a look at what's happening. Another paniculata here. Now this one is silver dollar. That one's silver dollar. And it is just behind the agastache. Bees love the agastache. We can just hear in the background there a uh, wood pigeon cooing away. Oh, we've got the eating apple here. This is the James Grieve. I've cut a lot of the branches off this eating apple. And here and everywhere, because as I walk past, I keep hitting my head on it. So one time I walked past and absolutely clattered my forehead here. And so I took that off straight, straight away. But I think the way round this is I need to make this bed wider up to here. So when I walk round, I don't keep hitting my head on it. And here we have the tropical bed. Just starting. So I've been digging all this over. It hasn't been touched and at the back there. I haven't touched this area 
for 15 years. And so see all the roots there I've had to dig out that's behind that hosta. Heavy going. There's no goodness in there. It's dry. Exactly what the tropicals don't want. But I'm going to change and amend the soil, improve the soil, put a whole load of compost on. And the first one here is, what's it called? Spider's web, is it? Fatsia? I don't think I've shown you this one. This is another hydrangea. Obviously a paniculata, because that's what I'm into, as well as lots of other plants, of course. And this one is another oak leaf hydrangea, and it's called amethyst. So I thought I would just put it here. It's a shady spot. They're woodland plants, aren't they, I believe? And we'll see how it does. So let's have a close look how it's doing. Its panicle is just starting. Leaves are growing. And I think I may have pruned it back a little bit. So here are some of the nice young new leaves. It's a rather scruffy area back here. I've got all this long grass that I want to do something with in one way or another. Some more foxgloves growing there, but in some ways I do like it. It's a little bit wild. Oh, and this is a marus. A uh, crab apple, isn't it? I think it's um, Jacob. Oh, I've just forgotten the name of it at the moment. And it, it has lovely red apples, little apples. Oh, the moon is just back there behind that other poplar tree next door. Half moon. Philadelphus, mock orange just coming out. It's getting a little floppy. I haven't pruned it or shaped it, but I'm going to have to once it's flowered because it needs to make way for some of these tropical plants that are going to go here. And indeed back there, we've got the uh, flamingo willow white leaves. Beautiful plant, actually. I cut that back a lot last year and it's grown forward and uh, filled in nicely. The Wygela here is just finishing flowering and dropping all its flowers into the pond. We're just newts in this pond. There are some frogs, but mostly newts in the pond. Let's just walk forward a little bit on this tropical bed. So here's a little Cleopatra, can of Cleopatra I put in. Now I bought this canna from someone on Facebook and they said it was a musifolia. But in actual fact, I don't think it is. I think it's, uh, well, I've written down here, Eric Anubert. That's fine. That's a big can of old, sending up some little ones here, some little shoots. I've actually left in a purple loose strife here. What do I got here? Oh, look at all little aphids. That's interesting. See the ants there? Yeah, just going on my fingers there, we've got the aphids. So those ants are actually milking those aphids. There's nature going on in your back garden. And next to it, we've got Brugmansia that I overwintered in the garage. And I've decided to put it in the ground. Let's see what it can do in the ground. Oh, I'm getting bitten by mosquitoes. We've got mosquitoes in the garden. Some alliums just over. I'll probably dig out these alliums to make room for uh, more tropical plants. I've actually put in here Crocosmia, Lucifer, I think they are. There we are. It's just, just coming up there. 
Oh, and some little ones there. They took their time in coming up and I thought they weren't going to. And just behind, I've got a Canna Durban or Tropicana. Uh, they've got lots of different marketing names. These poppies, I'm going to have to leave them to flower because look how well they're doing. But after they've flowered and I get some seeds, I think they're going to have to come out because we need all this area for those plants I've just shown, those tropical plants. Here we've got a Chemerops at Humilis. Just bought that this year. I think I paid £20 for that. It's put up about another two leaves since I've bought it and there's another one. There we are, there's a leaf there just coming through, isn't it? So I'm new to these palms, I've never had a palm before. I've popped in three, um, what are they? Hookara. They were just from, I just split a hookara that I dug up from another part of the garden. Pop those in there. This aquilegia flowered brilliantly, as you can see from all the seed heads. But again, it's taking up room, so it's now going to go. And yeah, I bought this uh, corda line just a month or two ago. I decided to pop it in the ground. I think it's called pink... pink phasian, is it? Um, perhaps not quite as hardy as the green ones, but it should be okay there. Oh, and just behind here, I've got a lobelia. Again, trying to follow my theme of red flowers. That should flower with beautiful red flowers. Those can actually go as a marginal in the pond. And I did have one a few years ago, but it didn't, survi didn't survive. A uh, couple of little cannas here. These, they're taking their time getting going, mainly because it's been relatively cold this last few weeks. And that is Happy Carmen. It's a dwarf canna. So it might just come up to here. And it has got red flowers. Ah, I thought it was something. I think a newt had just come out of the pond there, underneath those leaves. That's why I stopped speaking a couple of minutes ago and I was trying to look under there and I thought, is it um, a newt or something? Indeed, it must have been because it's not there now. And those leaves there are marsh marigold leaves. The yellow flag iris in the pond. They flowered quite early. They're just going over. I've got Agapanthus. These are blue Agapanthus. Well, I think one is blue and one's actually white. And they didn't flower last year, which was a little bit of a disappointment. But hey ho! They're going to flower this year because I'm going to give them some tomato food. And I've read that'll get them flowering. And here we've got chrysanthemums. Just bought uh, in a shop uh, to put in the house love the flowers etc so I split them potted them up again and put them outside and to overwinter them I actually buried them in one of the raised beds literally buried them six feet uh, six inches under soil pulled them out in April and they just started sprouting so that's how I'm going to overwinter these chrysanthemums so they were bought just as one plant for about £2.50 in a local shop, probably a little supermarket somewhere. There's some mint for making mint tea. Let's see what we've got here. There we are. Fresh herb, mint apple, mint apple. The tetrapanax there. Oh, and you know when I was talking about swapping plants? Well, I forgot to mention these, and I'm just trying to think what they are. They are Euphorbia yeah, um, mellifera, mellifera. And so the person I got these, or this tetrapanax from, I think it's this one, um, gave me these. They were, had lots of um, seedlings or runners. I'm not quite sure what they are in the greenhouse, so gave me three or four. 
Brugmansia here, and this is a Charles Grimaldi. Look at the leaves, they look pretty ropey. And I've been looking around at other people's Brugmansias and indeed Charles Grimaldi. And everyone seems to be having problems with the leaves. I bought this from a guy um, who was selling some cuttings. I think I paid about five pounds plus the postage. And the reason I wanted this one is this one scents better than just about any other Brugmansia. Charles Grimaldi. I think the trumpets are white. Late in the evening when everything's still, somehow water comes at its best. The yew tree that was self-seeded and growing, well, it's not out of the pond, but it's not far off the pond. Um, it grew to about 20 feet, 25 feet. So I actually cut the top off just to shorten it a little bit. Some better views of the uh, Japanese willow here. And then back here, that I haven't touched in years. I actually cleared some of this area. I've put in a Brunnera there. That's either Jack Frost or Sea Breeze. Another Brunnera, which is the same for some reason. I don't know, its uh, leaves are quite small, but uh, I'm gonna give that a good feed and see what it does. Some Hostas. And here we have a new plant, a new plant for me anyway and it's called Lamium. I'm sure you all know Lamium, but I didn't. And as I, I, was, I was at um, Bodnick Gardens the other month looking at their fabulous azaleas. It's in, um, well, Snowdonia really, North Wales. And they've got a fabulous uh, shop for selling plants, cuttings, etc. I don't know how they get the plants. Maybe they are cuttings. Many of them are actually from the place itself. And I saw while wandering around a few of these Alamium. And then when I went in the shop where they were selling the plants, there was a Lamium. It's like a little Brunnera. Look at these leaves. Gorgeous little leaves. But the reason I was particularly intrigued by it is for ground cover, because it goes along and starts rooting itself. I mean, this was only a little plant a month ago. And look, it's zipping along inside that hosta. Oh, and it's even flowering. So Lamium, love it. So I will be splitting that probably next year and putting it round the garden. And I just love the colour of these hostas. Absolutely gorgeous. Have a look at the sweet peas. If you want scent in the garden, you can't beat sweet peas. We've got the pyrocantha, firethorn. If you remember videos from a year or two ago, that was a lot bigger, but uh, one needs to get to the windows and I decided to take the clippers to it. And the rambling rector, the rambling rose. It's in a pot. Been in this pot for 15 years. And it's flowering nicely. Now, if this were in the ground, it would cover the whole house. And in fact, I might try and put it in the ground if I can find some soil that's deep enough for it. And just below here, now I bought this one. This one came from Thompson Morgan, actually. Uh, now, in fairness, the one they sent me wasn't too good and I rang them and they replaced it. So fair play. And this is, it's basically a macrophylla, a big leaf hydrangea, and it's called Glam Rock. And just look at that. It's only its second year. Let's just see. There's a, they are, kind of red, burgundy, 
Um, all sorts of colours actually, it all depends on the acidity of the soil. Obviously I've put it in ericaceous soil, there's a, a flower head that's sort of a bit more developed. So we'll see how that looks, so that is really new. We've got the two aces, this is the Crimson Queen. Plicatum dissectum, I believe it may be. And here's the other Acer, the one that I actually got the wrong name. I, I, I for some reason I put Purpurea or something, and uh, if I get names wrong, I really like it when uh, people say, actually, I think it's this. And some of you lovely viewers actually uh, told me that I got it wrong, so I was pleased about that. Um, and just another thing about this one, you know, I was cutting the roots off. Um, it was really, and I, and I kind of showed a flippant clip of that. It was actually because this, oh look, I haven't, I haven't weeded this. I've sort of left it. I keep meaning to weed it. It was in a large square pot and I couldn't get it into a round pot that I wanted. So I had to cut the corners off. In one of the videos I'll show you. Uh, me doing that, but it wasn't bothered. I don't recommend cutting roots off plants particularly, but it, uh, it certainly thrived because I then put it in lovely soil, compost, watered it, and it thought, yeah, this is all right. And forgive me for the lack of uh, side roots on it. <laughs> The grapevine the postman gave me that I cut right back each year will grow and cover this pergola here in the next couple of months. And here's the large lace cap hydrangea. Absolutely gorgeous. In fact, it's grown another couple of feet there. That is taller than it was last year. Oh, and look at these hookera. Now it seems to me, maybe it's the timing, I'm not quite sure, but it seems to me that the light coloured, light leaved coloured hookeras have lighter coloured flowers or brighter flowers. Maybe it's because they're at their best right now and the darker ones aren't, I don't know. But I was watching these this afternoon and the bees were loving this one. Probably prune and deadhead the lilac. This is the white lilac. Possibly take it back just a little bit. This is a good time to take it back because the flowers are finished. It's got all year then to establish its new growth and flower next year. Now the catinus, the smoke bush. Oh, look at those leaves. There are one or two different ones. I'm not sure which this is. Uh, or, well, I can't recall anyway. It might be Grace. I think there's another one with larger leaves, but the size of the leaf, there's some bigger leaves, depends on whether you cut them back or not. Now I cut this here, down here, right back last year, because it was coming right over this border, which is why it isn't flowering too well this early summer. But at the top here, it's flowering nicely. But yes, you can grow this as a tree, a bush. You can prune it back as much as you like and it grows back. I love that kind of shrub. It takes a bit of maintenance because you do have to cut it back. And if you don't, it can get a bit unruly, but you can cut it back as far as you like. And what have we got here? Surprise, surprise, we've got some cannas. And these are Canna Wyoming, and these are going to be big. These are going to be six foot. Well, they, I had two in a pot last year and they were six foot and then the flower spike took them to eight feet. 
the London Pride just carrying on flowering. They've been flowering for weeks and weeks. Back to the dahlia bed. For the very first time, I've actually had a go at what the professionals do. When you see these stately homes and the gardeners have these pea sticks really and fold them over and I've had a little go. I was a bit late doing it as you should do it well before uh, the plant grows up, but they grew up so fast. I went away for a few days, came back and they were like this. And really I should maybe pinch them out or do something. This isn't ideal, but I did buy a few of these. They do manage and get through there. I only put these on the other day and they've just shot straight through. <laughs> just look at that one. I should have lifted those and split them. Um, it's a bit unruly. This is far too, it's far too thick, really. This one I did split. This one here, and there's a cactus dahlia there. So here, I've just literally put the pea stick in here like that, and it can just grow against it. Some of these are a little tall. But I thought I'll wait until they grow and then I can just cut them off because I don't actually like to see support. So I'll just cut them off um, at an appropriate time, an appropriate height. But certainly these will grow straight through those supports. Yeah, this flower's starting here, a little flower head there. Yeah, I should have pinched them out really. This is another lace cap, hydrangea, just about starting. And in fact, this is a cutting from the one over there, from that one there, a few years ago. The tree lilies are taller than last year. They didn't get to that height last year. So that's getting towards six feet and you can just see the, uh, the bulb starting there, the buds. Oh, and we've got a little ladybird. Oh, we've got a whole load of other things as well. There's whitefly, a ladybird. Now, ladybird, do you eat whitefly? I know you eat aphids, but um, hopefully you eat whitefly as well. So those will be in flower in not too long. A mahonia in the background. Bit of a thug really, but I cut it back. Flowers really well in the winter and then you can just see the berries back there. And here is the uh, flowering current that kind of died the other year. I was disappointed in that because it was the height I wanted, the thickness I wanted. It hasn't totally died because there's new growth coming up from here, but most of these stems and the main part of the plant has died. So I planted this Clematis Montana down there and it shot up here, round here, zipped up here, and the weight of it has folded it over. And it's hanging down here. So what I'm going to do is cut some of it back about to here so that it will form a thicker amount of stems and they can go off in different directions, but I'll probably have to train it. But I've left these at the moment because we can take cuttings of these really easily. So there we are. That's a little look round the garden late in the evening in early June. The birds are still singing away. No workmen are doing anything. The planes, hopefully, the planes are. Ah, oh, it's lovely that robin there. The planes uh, aren't flying over at the moment. So it's absolutely ideal. 
So I think I will go in now and have a nice cup of tea. And I hope you've enjoyed a little wander around my garden late in the evening in June. And I'll see you next time in Paltese World. Bye.